Hello, birds of a feather here. This is your girl, AJ Jones. AJ, the suburban princess, that is. Um, giving a brief pregame synopsis um, of what we should be expecting for tomorrow's Eagles' 1 o'clock game against the Bears. They have landed in Chicago, so they're all chilling. Unfortunately, even though he went with the group, uh, Dallas Goddard will not be suiting up tomorrow's game. I think that's just a precaution, but I also do think it's because maybe the scheme's been running pretty smooth without him thus far. Um, and I don't think they want to waste a week where he could get an extra, extra week of recovery from his shoulder injury, which rumor has it that it's a more bone on bone type thing. So it's something that it probably just takes a lot of time to, to get the swelling totally down and him feeling like himself. So it's probably a good thing. I'm kind of nervous only because when they go to Dallas, that might be more of a defensive battle against him. So I have a feeling that game might be rougher on him than it was when he first got injured. But, you know, he's got to get back in there at some point. And luckily, Stoll and Calcaterra are doing pretty good with the blocking scheme and uh, getting first downs up the middle. So it's kind of a happy accident in a way because they don't really need Dallas but he does help when they do those screen plays. When I was listening to Inside the Birds with uh, Greg and Adam, um, they were talking about how the thing that uh, Goddard is definitely strong on is when they decide to do tight end screens. Because this season, they didn't really do the run uh, the running back schemes, screens very well. And I'm sure that's just a technique thing that they have to get used to. I think it just took a while for Miles to even get to where he finally got his 1,000 yards this year. So hopefully tomorrow... Uh, Smitty will be on the road to getting his 1,000. Um, he's perfectly capable because last time I checked, or from what I've heard from some of the podcast guys, uh, is that um, Devonta Smith is pretty much only like maybe less than 200 yards away from hitting two th- uh, hitting 1,000 yards. So hopefully that will start tomorrow, if not definitely in Dallas. Um, but at Dallas will be a battle. Christmas Eve, also the fact that the way they left them um, is going to leave a bitter taste in their mouth and they're going to not be in Philly, obviously. So it's going to be, it's going to be a doggy dog fight. Um, at this point, now that the Vikings won their uh, game today, tonight against, um, against the Colts in overtime, ridiculous fashion, which both teams played so messily. In the beginning, it really seemed like the Colts were going to run with it because they pretty much owned the whole first half. But something about Matt Ryan at quarterback when he has a lead at halftime, it seems like the whole team starts to just chill and suddenly offense is non-existent for the second half into overtime. So Matt Ryan had to once again be having a flashback of (laughs) 28-3 and versus the Patriots and that vicious comeback. So... You got to give it to the Vikings. They found a way to win, even in overtime when it seemed like down to the wire, even the last minutes of overtime, we didn't know who the heck was going to win. And it just seemed corny in this uh, part of the latter part of the season for you to end in another tie, (laughs) you know, but the Vikings um, made up for whatever they weren't getting it together in the first half um, by forcing overtime and then getting the win. So as much as (laughs) Eagle fans lament that the Colts missed a golden opportunity to help, you know, the Eagles getting closer and closer to to winning the conference, there's still a lot of factors you have to consider with San Francisco. You have to consider the fact that um, at this point, it would be good for the Eagles to continue to win just just because, but it also gives them a a good chance of definitely securing um, home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So that's usually the goal. But if it doesn't happen, it's fine. Luckily, this team has a mentality that I don't think a matchup is going to make or break them at this point. I think it's just a matter of, and I've said it all season, I I truly believe the only team that can beat the Eagles are the Eagles themselves. Um, As much as the matchups seem like they were a little hard to predict, um, pretty much the only loss really was because the Eagles just took their eye off the ball. I mean, there was no reason for them to lose to the commanders that night at home. So they are pretty much their own worst enemy. So at that this point, I really don't see anything more like that kind of happening. 
unless they're gain, getting beat from the beginning of the game to the end, you know, and Chicago is definitely not that team, but I wouldn't sleep on some of their um, offensive wide receivers, but I'm just hoping that Jalen continues to stay focused like he's been. And like I said, I hope Devonta and Miles and AJ get a nice little, little spreading of the ball. Um, and if the tight ends have to, if they have to show up, you know, I hope they make a lot of important catches and first downs and blocks that um, allow Miles to rock Boston to rock if necessary, and um, Kenny G to to rock towards the end of the game because any part of this team um, that stays focused will push them even further to thirteen and one. So. At this point, I think everyone just wants to see this team continue to finish it out regardless of the noise. A lot of the stuff that was trying to divert the focus this week, <laughs> a week early, with uh, the whole podcast interview with uh, um, Micah, uh, I just felt like at this point it, it was stupid fodder. And I don't really think he said anything too insulting about Hurts. I just think that most people are perplexed that the Eagles are doing as good as they are. And everyone's perplexed that people would dare say Jalen Hurts' name this uh, early in the season uh, next to Mahomes because Mahomes is just assumed to be the MVP uh, as far as consistency. But Mahomes kind of started tripping up last week and threw three picks in a game, whereas Hurts had been throwing three picks all season. So to me, there's no debate. Uh, there were a lot of quarterbacks before the season started getting underway that seemed like they were going to be in the MVP race by themselves. And if they're not hurt, they're having a, a slew of bad wins or losses, and they're no longer in the running. You know, I wanted Herbert to be in there. I still want um, Josh Allen and them who are playing now. Um, I still want him to be in the running for MVP. I mean, honestly, it's Jalen, Patrick, and Josh to lose as far as the MVP race, as far as I'm concerned. I don't see anybody else at this point who's 100% healthy and having a decent year. Um, being in the running. I mean, they throw Joe Burrow in there now because the Bengals are starting to click, but you know, Joe had a shaky first part of the season and he finally got his wide receiver back and his O-line have finally figured out how to block for him. So I think that's why Joe's being thrown back into the mix, but the top three are definitely hurts Mahomes and um, Allen. still, even with Allen having shaky games and throwing picks at the last minute, I still do think that Hertz's name should be in the MVP running regardless. Um, he's thrown a lot more um, good than bad. And like we said, we just talked about the interception ratio was very important because his whole growth as a quarterback, his whole ability to throw down the field when people thought that he just didn't want to, he just didn't have enough weapons. And at this point, they needed more than Devonta. And so it's it's a blessing that AJ came. And it's also a blessing that Zach Pascal is there to fill in the blanks. Um, and then it's good that they still have their tight ends. So for the most part, filling in those blanks is really what all Jaden Jalen needed this, this season. Besides the fact he chose to bulk up on his, his physical and, and become more mentally sharp and more aware of the defense and just thinking quicker on the throw. Um, I think only maybe a couple times this season, he's kind of waffled around and done circles trying to figure out where to go, but it hasn't happened as often, but he's had stronger games than others, and that's fine. I just know that he's very capable of coming back from a bad first half than he ever was last year. But he's seen enough and he's done enough at this point to not even have anybody debate, but it's something fun to do throughout the week. Um, some fans were taking it more seriously than others. I definitely wasn't. Um, I get tired of it after a while because it's just pointless, and you see a lot of people just want to get on TV, and then there are analysts who – claim they know what they're talking about and they don't. Um, and then some Chris Sims who decided to make ridiculous lists with quarterbacks who are not even in the same league as Jalen right now. So sometimes it's just a matter of matching wits against people. And that's all it is. It doesn't really change anything. As Jalen says, it doesn't deposit, deposit any checks in his bank. So it's irrelevant news. Uh, nothing that any of us fans should be worrying about. Um, but what I am interested to see is to see how the Bears even play. Is it going to be a game? Is it going to be a struggle in the beginning? Sometimes the Eagles 
you know, under, underestimate their opponent at times in the beginning. But the difference with this team is usually it doesn't take them all first half to figure it out. Um, and if it does, it's usually because they're missing somebody either on defense or offense is struggling. There's always a reason. But I don't doubt that if there's any, you know, first quarter issues um, outside of weather and uh, general concentration, this game should be pretty com- pretty well in hand, I should say, before fourth quarter. So we'll see what happens. But anything can happen at this point. Everybody's desperate. The Bears are eliminated, but they can still play spoiler, you know, just to, just for the sake of breaking up the um, – uh, the 12 and one, 12 and one, pretty much undefeated record in a way. Cause if you really don't want to even think about how that game crumbled for the Washington game, um, they're pretty much still undefeated to me, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a good challenge. I'm glad it's an early game to get it out the way. Um, but it also, it also leaves a lot of room for all these other teams that are slowly just now securing a playoff berth because the Eagles were the first to secure, a playoff berth so now it's just to see how the nfc south shakes out um and the nfc west was won uh last the other night by um by the uh by the 49ers because uh, the seahawks just couldn't get it together right when it mattered and um even though gino has grown leaps and bounds this year um i think that uh somehow that game just kind of got out of hands really quickly and um with or without Jimmy G, Brock Purdy is pretty much going to be the most entertaining last quarter of a season quarterback, you know, on a team to watch in this last stretch. So, um, and other than that, it's just, you know, just wait till the regular season rolls out. Um, the Giants game is not really probably going to even matter after the New Year or New Year's Day, whenever it is. But the Giants game might actually, I mean, um, the Dallas game will definitely have a little bit more edge to it now because of all the the little bit of the noise that was created unnecessarily the week that they didn't play them um so we'll see how ridiculous it gets next week um after this game but they shouldn't over they shouldn't overlook this game at all they should take it as another excuse to you know knock it to from 12 to lucky 13 and keep focus because it's very easy to kind of just coast right now and think that oh we got this game we got this game And then you F around and it could be a Washington loss, you know? So I just hope that they stay engaged for most of the game because they can probably try a few trick plays, you know, if they're, if they're feeling that confident in how the plan, the general scheme is looking, um, Justin Fields might still play. So he might give them a run for his money, literally as much as he can to prove, uh, he needs to stay another couple of years. So, We'll see what happens. I'm hoping it's entertaining at least because Lord knows when it's a boring game early, you just you have no impetus to watch the rest of the game. But I'm not one of those fans that turns the game off when I get bored, especially when it's my team. I may decide to go do some laundry, cook something, whatever, but I still have it on. So go birds regardless. And tomorrow morning, actually, Eddie and I are going to do another co-ed edition pregame and just discuss what we're hoping to see. And um how everything else has looked for us thus far for this conference. And then we might even talk a little Sixers because the Sixers won and beat the Warriors, but Stephen Curry list Warriors, um, a team that's pretty much going through a lot of ups and downs this season. So I don't really feel like the Sixers really went full throttle against the real Warriors. I think it's starting to get time where this team is probably going to break up the Warriors next season. And it might just be strictly – Steph Curry and Clay. Um, I I do I definitely see Draymond Draymond going somewhere else because I don't think his whole blow up with that um with the young pool guy <laughs> was a good look for him to continue on that team. And you know his mouth will always get him in trouble. So I just think for the chemistry, I think they've kind of run their course in uh, the Golden Gate area. So it might be time for the Warriors to have another roster shakeup next season in order to keep the uh, the good juju going so we'll see but Sixers are doing pretty well there last time I checked they were number five in the uh um Atlantic or the I forget what they call it for the NL Atlantic division or whatever you want to call it for NBA the East division and uh so that's better than what it was because they were like 10 or 12 last time I checked so 
at this point, they're out of the playoff, the play-in game berth. So hopefully they stay at least top 10 or top five for most of the rest of the season. Um, it's been hard for them to get a good consistency going with all the new roster guys and then the guys have been hurt. And with Joel starting to slowly connect more and more and get 30 points off and on and get double, triple here, 50 points here, um, he's starting to pick up the weight that he – wasn't able to hold on to a lot in the first part of the season. So hopefully everybody will follow suit. And um, some of these new guys that are dragging their feet, PJ will pick them up in time by the time they wrap this regular season up. So here's to the Sixers. Flyers got another one last night. I know they're really not in the picture for anything, but yay Flyers. And um, yeah, Phillies are still making a lot of roster changes. Uh, um, it looks like Thor is going to another team. Zach Eflin's going to another team. Ryan, Ryan, I forget what that other guy was, that other pitcher, but he's gone to another team. So a lot of guys have left that were probably question marks regardless. Um, Trey Turner, and now they just signed the Tejuan or Taiwan Walker pitcher. And um, there's probably more things coming, but right now the Phillies are working pretty good during these winter meetings and hopefully nothing but productivity by springtime and hopefully uh, a closer recovery for Bryce than we're all dreading because we know that Tommy John doesn't really allow you to heal fast as you'd like. Um, but Bryce has probably been in surgery more than once, so I'm sure he knows this is a process, and he's obviously had to work through a lot this past season. So granted, yes, he probably should have got that surgery sooner, but I mean, they went to the World Series, like for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm not mad at Bryce for waiting, you know, as long as he did, because there's no they no way they would have even gotten that close if he hadn't stayed on the team when he got back from the general UCL injury and other things that he hurt this season. But he's always going to be the backbone of this team. And I don't blame him for waiting because honestly, they could have won it, you know, and it doesn't mean they can't go back anytime soon, because I think the more they shake up the roster with guys that could have an immediate impact, um, the greater their chances are to go back to the World Series or at least get to the um, the NL conference rounds. So I don't I don't doubt that the Phillies can't be back there. So um, just because I can tell that the front office has finally gotten the urgency that they didn't have for a while with trying to shake up the roster. And making certain signings make sense. I definitely would love if McCutcheon came back here. Um, I know that people thought his bat wasn't really helping them. And it wasn't. But I don't see why someone like a veteran like him wouldn't be a good energy in the club base. And I know you can't sign people for that alone. But um, I don't know. I just don't think it would kill them to bring him back for like a year. Um you know, even if it's off the, you know, if he's just coming off like as a, as a, not even a DH because he's not a DH, but just as the guy that comes like within the roster every now and then. Um, but that's all my thoughts for now. Other than that, um, rest in peace to rest in peace to Stephen Twitch boss, who was definitely a, a gentle, fun, fine, positive soul dancing literally a dancing boss himself from so you think you can dance to the ellen show um and to a general um social media um darling with his wife who <clears throat> if you're a praying person give her all the strength you need because this is a lot for her everything happened so suddenly this past week and the holidays are never easy for people who lose their family members so especially when it's your husband and you know, it's suicide is nothing to play with. Uh, and I just hope that people take it a lot more seriously. There's just a lot of people starting to starting to crack under the pressures of everyday life. And it's a real thing. It's not stuff that people create for drama. And it's just something you can't really put into a box, something you can't give a label, um, something you not necessarily can talk to everybody about. Sometimes you don't even know what words to say. Um, so just pray for Allison and her family. Pray for all those who loved him and worked with him recently and did not even see signs of this coming. Um, and just hope that not every holiday will 
be this painful for the family as the years go by. And hopefully it won't have a long-term effect on the children. If anything, I would hope that it would encourage them to want to get help a lot sooner, if not continue to get help and never take a break from it because you don't see a point. There's always a reason for help. There's always a reason for you to reach out for help. Just like every day you should pray if you're a prayer, you know, every day you should meditate, you know, every day you should do some kind of an exercise. It's all for the greater good. And, you know, just pray for those who can't, who can't or won't get that help or don't know how. And just pray that everybody finds positive solutions to deal with conflict resolution. And hopefully the world will slowly start to become a better place. And if not, find that happy place and enjoy it every day. That's all I got. Birds of a feather, AJ the Suburban Princess. Go birds, I'm out.